Hello again, it's Cathy Cassidy and I'm going to read chapter 3 of Love from Lexi to you today. And um, As you can see, I'm actually outside. We've got a little courtyard at the back of our house and that's where I'm sitting because it's sunny but not exactly in the bit that I'm sitting in. But hey, I'm going to make the best of it anyway. I hope all of you are hanging on and doing okay um, with the whole lockdown thing and that you're okay with not being at school and not getting to see your friends all of the time and the idea of reading a chapter every day from Love from Lexi it's so that maybe it helps you to pass the time a little bit faster and helps you perhaps to escape into a story so you'll find the first two chapters already uploaded onto my YouTube and here is chapter three and it's a special chapter today because we actually get to meet one of the main characters in the story who isn't a human character. Um, not sure if this is going to work, but I'm just going to show you because in between each of the chapters in uh, the book, there are, you'll either find a letter from Lexi to her missing mom or perhaps something else like a song or in this case today, it's a poster. So I'm going to try and show you the poster. And hopefully that will work out and you can actually read it and see what it says, but it, I'll read it anyway. It says, Lost, Mary Shelley has gone missing from the garden of 67 Kenilworth Road. She likes cherries, green beans and dandelion leaves, as well as sunbathing, climbing and exploring. Reward of five pounds offered for her return. Sorry, we're all a bit skint just now. And there's a little picture of Mary. And chapter three is called Meeting Mary Shelley. So here we go. The posters were everywhere, stuck on lampposts, trees, fences, taped up in steamy shop windows. I was nine years old and there was nobody in the world more lost than me. But I stopped in my tracks and studied the posters. A lost tortoise from the student house along the road. A tortoise called Mary Shelley. This will be a perfect test case, Bex told me. First we find the tortoise, then we find your mum. She took me to the local library, bigger and brighter than the one on the Skylark estate I used to go to with mum. The librarian, Miss Walker, was young and friendly, with candy pink hair and polka dot vintage dresses that swished as she moved. Bex told me that the missing tortoise Mary Shelley was named after an author of the same name. Her book, Frankenstein, was about a mad scientist who made a monster from broken leftover bits of people. I liked the idea of that. I was in the process of trying to put myself back together after all. I borrowed the book. The librarian told me to be careful in case it gave me nightmares and I laughed as if I didn't have nightmares every single night anyhow. We borrowed a book on how to be a detective too and on the way home we bought cheap notebooks from the corner shop and wrote details from the poster inside. We found new cases too. A lost scarf, a pair of mislaid school shoes that lit up when you walked, a stolen chocolate bar. That last one was the only case we actually solved. The chocolate bar was mine. I'd left it on my bed and came back upstairs to find it gone. Brandon, my foster brother, had brown smears all round his mouth and very sticky fingers. But by the time we found Mandy, he'd wiped his face and swallowed the evidence. Then before I could find out if I had a talent for detective work, my social worker Josie stepped in and put a stop to it all. Don't you think that some of these things might just be, well, lost, she said, holding out the notebook. Tortoises do wander off. People lose things. Lost things can be found, I said stubbornly. Josie raised an eyebrow. Is this what the letters are about, she asked, and my cheeks burned because I didn't think anyone knew about the letters letters I bluffed but I knew I'd been found out Josie sighed 
the letters you've been sending to the flat where we found you, she said. The place you used to live, letters addressed to your mum. I understand why you might want to do that, but Lexi, be realistic. If your mum comes back, she'll find you. But new people live at that flat now and they're not happy about the letters. I blinked back tears. Why couldn't I send letters to the flat? How else was mum supposed to know where I was when she came back? I promised to wait for her and I had right up until social services had taken me away. Lexi? My shoulders slumped. Whatever. I won't send any more letters to the flat. Good girl, Josie said, and we're all a bit worried about this detective thing. It's not healthy, Lexi. I can still remember the injustice of it. It hadn't even been my idea, but I was being punished for it. Not fair. Things have been hard for you, Josie was saying, but the letters aren't helping. And all this detective stuff won't bring your, mom, your mum back. You know that, Lexi, don't you? It's time to let go of the past. The tears I'd worked so hard to push away stung my eyes then and rolled down my cheeks like rain. But in the end, I did let go of the past just a little bit. Bex was bored with the whole detective thing within a couple of weeks, so we gave up. I was pretty sure that the light-up shoes had ended up in the bin, part of a vendetta between Wayne and Brandon, and the scarf had been found floating in the fish pond, culprit unknown. I still worried about the tortoise, though. Time moved on. Wayne and Brandon went back to live with their mum, and Mandy and John told the social worker they'd like to make my temporary foster place more permanent. I wanted to tell them not to bother, that my mum might come back any day now, but I knew they would just look at me with pity in their eyes and I didn't want that. I was practicing handstands against the garage wall on the morning of my 11th birthday when I saw it. A small grey tortoise legging it across the lawn of 3 Kenilworth Road. Even upside down, I'd have known that tortoise anywhere. I ran across the grass, scooping her up as she rustled into the flower bed. Mary Shelley, I exclaimed, looking her in the eye, and I swear her scaly little mouth twitched a little, as if she knew her name. Where have you been all this time? Upstairs, a window opened and Bex looked out. What are you doing? What have you got? She called down. It's Mary Shelley, I yelled. At last! Bex ran out and the two of us legged it along the street to the student house, me carrying Mary Shelley. I knew it was the right house because there was a one-wheeled bicycle upside down on the grass and a pair of skinny jeans hanging from an open upstairs window, dripping slightly. Bex rang the doorbell and eventually a girl appeared. We've found your tortoise, I said. Mary Shelley. The girl frowned. My name's not Mary and we don't have a tortoise, she said. No, no, the tortoise is Mary Shelley, Bex explained. Don't you remember? She escaped a while ago. You put about posters offering five quid reward. Is this a scam? The girl wanted to know because I have no idea what you're talking about. We've only just moved in and we do not have a tortoise. I blinked and Mary Shelley blinked too, slowly and thoughtfully. She edged one front leg up against my collarbone and I noticed how warm her skin was, much warmer than you might think. It's not a scam, I said. We do not have a tortoise, the girl repeated, folding her arms. We do not want a tortoise. Last year's lot are all gone and we don't have any forwarding address. Plus, there is no five pound reward. No way. Nice to meet you too, Beck said as the door slammed in our faces. I sighed. It seemed kind of tragic that Mary Shelley should be found at last, only for her original owners to be lost. I spread a protective hand across her shell. They don't deserve her, Beck said as we walked back to the house, ungrateful pigs. But on the upside, it's your birthday. 
Mandy and John have to let you keep her, right? Mary Shelley pottered around on the kitchen floor, sniffing politely at a cabbage leaf while we ate chocolate birthday cake and planned her future. We struggled to find a birthday present you'd really love, Mandy commented. Now I know why. Fate was taking care of things. She's lovely, Lexi. I can keep her, I checked. Really? Of course, John said. She'll be no trouble. I'd better check the garden fence so she doesn't go walk about again. And according to Google, she needs a heat lamp. I was so elated I could have hugged them, but I held back. I smiled politely at Mandy instead and she smiled back a little sadly. I felt bad, but I didn't want them to get the wrong idea. We wouldn't be staying there much longer, not once Mum came back. Meanwhile though, Mary Shelley had landed on her feet. And I guess I had too. So that's the end of chapter three and there will be another chapter up for you tomorrow. Um, but I did tell you that you would get to actually meet one of the characters from the book. And that's true because one of the characters from the book is real. Um, and it's not very often that an author gets to actually include a real character in a story because most people would kind of complain maybe if you put them in a story you'd have to be really really careful but if it's an animal character sometimes it's okay so here we go this is mary shelley the real mary shelley and she was the inspiration for the tortoise character in love from lexi mary's story is quite cool um, she used to belong to a, a friend of my daughter, a guy called Jam and his family. And my daughter Caitlin used to look after Mary every time Jam went away for work or perhaps away on holiday. So she was kind of the tortoise sitter. And that's how I first got to know Mary Shelley and I thought it would be so nice to put her in a story. But in a very strange twist of fate, a, a year or so ago, um, Jam and his wife had, had a baby I think it was more than a year maybe two years ago yeah it was and um, that wasn't really ideal if you if you've got a little tortoise wandering about and a baby also starting to crawl not good so Jam gave Mary Shelley to my daughter and Mary became Caitlin's tortoise and then another twist of fate my daughter um, fell in love and went away to live on a broken boat in um, Cornwall with her boyfriend doing a fantastic project and uh, Mary couldn't really go with them because it's not a good place to live if you're a tortoise um, wandering about on deck of a broken boat so Mary came to live with us and she's been with us for around a year now um, and we love her she's brilliant she did hibernate a little bit this year but it didn't really get cold enough um, She's awake now and this is her first day outside, so I'm going to uh, let her have a little explore. But I did want, want her to be able to say hello to you. Uh, she doesn't really know she's famous, but it's quite cool. She's very modest. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow for chapter four.